What's up ladies and gents in Cyberland? This is Chris coming to you with another video for RGMF and today I'm going to be doing a review on uh, my favorite band. Um, this band I've been, it's been my favorite band since I'd say since I saw uh, a video on the box back in 97, uh, Green Day. So um, been a fan of theirs since that time. Everything they've come out with, I've been happy with. I've never had an album I didn't like. I just have albums I like more than others. Um, this album in particular, it's very special to me because, um, and this is no disrespect to the band or other fans that love Green Day. However, this album, I don't think the band has been, ab been able to match that again. And I don't mean in regards to success because the, they've had other albums sell more than this album. But I would say the aggressiveness, the lyricism, um, the the way the music was crafted, the way the instruments were played. I don't think the band has ever come around to this full um, come around to this type of album again. And honestly, I don't want them to. Um, I want them to, you know, I want them to continue to progress. So the album that I'm talking about is Insomniac. So let's, I'll give a quick uh, history lesson uh, about Insomniac. So around um, the 94, the explosion with Dookie and stuff, and during that time, Green Day was getting um, a lot of fans and the album was selling like hotcakes, but they were also getting a lot of shit. Um, and of course, I got into the band later, but it's stuff I've read and, and kind of pieced together in the interviews and stuff is that they were getting a lot of shit because um, they were now major label. The album was selling, and a lot of people in the punk community um, who felt that um, anybody who's a major label is a sellout and all this other shit. Of course, let's not, you know, we're not going to talk about, um, you know, the Sex Pistols. We're not going to talk about the Ramones, how they were also a major label. But, you know, that doesn't matter because they didn't sell, right? Um, so they were getting a lot of shit for that. And it got to a point where, um, you know, even it wasn't just. Uh, the punk community, it was also, um, you know, critics and stuff were, 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 were talking about them too. And it's just like, you're on a major, um, you know, um, distributor for, um, entertainment and such in regards to, uh, newspapers and stuff and articles, but you're criticizing a band for, for, um, getting their music to a broader fan base. So during that time, um... Billy and the band, you know, Mike and Trey were just getting, you know, just really getting pissed off about what was going on because all they, from their standpoint, they have a right to distribute their music how they see fit. And that goes for any group. It's only, in my opinion, it only becomes a sellout thing when you start to make music that's only going to get you on the radio. They didn't make music that was going to get them on the radio. They made music and it just happened to be that people liked it. And that goes for any hip-hop group or any band. Like, people know when a band is selling out. People know when a hip-hop group is selling out. It was just the fact of people were pissed off that they were the ones that made it big. And a lot of bands that there was a lot of jealousy and envy and a lot of people felt that there was other bands that were better than them that should have made it big. But that didn't happen. So, you know, get the fuck over it. So, um... The band started writing, had some stuff going on, um, and I guess, you know, not too long after Dookie's release, they came out uh, the following year, not even a two-year gap, really, with Insomniac. Insomniac was more abrasive, it was more in your face, um, it didn't let up. There wasn't one song on that album that let up at all, not one. There wasn't a song on there that was, um, I guess you could say, kind of laid back kind of thing every single song on that album was uh fast paced or lyrical content was dark there wasn't i mean outside of i would say westbound sign because that was uh, billy talking about his wife moving from i believe minnesota to uh, california and that song wasn't dark but I, I guess you could say that's probably where it, that's the one song that lets up because um armage his shanks brat stuck with me geek stink breath no Pride, Bob, Bob, Bob's Alva, Who, 86, Stewart in the Avenue, Brain Stew, Jaded, um, um, Tightwad Hill, and uh, Walking Contradiction. Not, neither, not one of those songs was, I would say, 
and in comparison to a long view or um, a basket case or uh, you know um, coming clean or when I come around there wasn't there wasn't th those songs were just not that just was not on this album you know and there was <laughs> um, I'll, I'll talk about that later uh, for Nimrod, there's there's a there's a song that has to do with about Insomniac and the the backlash that some people got. The album didn't sell as much as um, Dookie either, and I don't. I and I think people will say, well, the times were changing, people's taste was changing. I think the album didn't sell as much as Dookie. It could have sold more because it didn't get as much touring, of course, because um, the band was fatigued and they just decided, decided to cancel um, the Insomniac tour. I think if the boys had um, had done a full tour of Insomniac like Dookie, I don't think it would have sold um, the, the full amount as Dookie, but I think it would have sold maybe half of it or at least, you know, uh, three-fourths of it um, because it's not a bad album. Some people called it Dookie 2. I don't see, to this day, I don't feel anything on that album. Maybe Armitage Shanks is very similar in lyricism a little bit to Basket Case. But outside of that, I don't see any song on there um, that remotely feels like a song that could be part of Dookie at all. Like, um, it's just not one of those albums. And you know, and I, and the band does talk about it from time to time. I wish, um, and this is just one of my things, you know. But I really wish uh, the band would play Westbound Side live. Live. That's one song I've never seen. I don't think they've ever played live, and I think it would be great if they just did that one time, you know. But that's that's me as a fan. So um, for uh, rating, I would give the album five out of five yes sirs. There's not one song I don't like. There's just songs I like more than others. But um, it's also one of my favorite albums. Um, has my one of my favorite songs, and it's by my favorite band. So I remember one friend <laughs> told me that was an interesting thing to say. But I'm like, hey, you know. Um, it's not complicated. Um, there's nothing on there that's just, and I can relate to like almost every single song. I mean, you know, when I when I got it, um, I got it as a Christmas present, and I could just relate to everything on there. Like every single song, it just had something for me. Even if the song was about drugs, it's not that I've been involved in drugs, but I can relate to what they were talking about. You know, because I do know, um, you know, like Ty Wad Hill about. Um, speedballing and stuff I've heard stories about people who have done it or um, actresses and actresses who have, have done it or who you know or um, stuck with me about not fitting into the cookie cutter mold of a, a elite type of group or Amish to Shanks having the nervousness and um, you know uh, the mindset of how your life could be or how it should be brat um, we've all <laughs> That the the song is more extreme, but I I think everybody who's who's uh, been a child of a parent has all been a little bit of an ass at one point or another. Everybody, nobody's nobody was clean cut for uh, when it came to that. Um, Gink stink breath. With that, um, I would just say you know it's just relating because knowing somebody or seeing somebody who you know. Put themselves in a situation to where they're on drugs and they're in the result from being on it you know um 86 that song in particular is mainly about the band being kicked out of gilman because they went major label it's not anything but that um and then steward in the avenue pretty much uh in a bad relationship so there, there's not there's not i wouldn't say it's not a happy album because it's not but um I would just say if, if uh, you want the aggressive side of of the band, like you don't want it ever to be a situation, you don't ever want to hear um, a, a soft ballad. If you don't ever, you just you just want an album from them. You just want to hear an album from them where it's just from start to finish. It it just goes um, full fledged uh, speed um, and just very aggressive, very drum hard hitting drums. Um, fast paced bass um, and you know scratching and, and screeching and wailing guitar um, you're, that's out of their whole uh, catalog um, to me to this day that's that'll be the album you're, I think you're gonna get
And then, you know, some people love Insomniac. Some fans, it's not one of their top five. Some fans, it's not even their top one. It's probably, or it's in their top five. It's it's one of those albums where it gets a mixed baggage because some people wanted Dookie Part 2. Some people wanted them to not be so abrasive and so aggressive. And then some people, um, you know, they want it. Or I don't say they want, it's just you have a lot later fans. It's just like they just know American Idiot moving forward. and Or they'll know Dookie, skip Insomniac and Nimrod and go and Warning, go straight to American Idiot and forward. And then you have some fans who just like um, Dookie and that's it. So with regards to uh, my top tracks, I'm going to say Brains 2, of course, is my uh, top track. Um, followed by Stuck With Me. Followed by West by Westbound Sign. Followed by uh, Armented Shanks, and then followed by 86. I normally don't say this, but I would say my honorable mention would be, and it's really a tie, um, Walking Contradiction and Geek Stink Breath. It was a tough decision. Normally, I, I don't have a problem naming my top five tracks, but those songs are just so well written with the top five to me that it's, and, and especially with the musicianship and stuff, it was just a tough call to where it's like, um, I got my top five, and, and I, you know, um, it's hard for me to put, it was hard for me, like, the, the first, first three songs out of my five were easy to do, but the last two, and then trying to, like, ah, oh, Geek Stink, or Walking Contradiction, and, and then 86, and uh, uh, Armitage Shanks, it was just, like, a, a toss-up, and um, I feel that for those two, those songs in particular, I think Armitage because of, especially the way Armitage opens up the album, you already know it's it's this ain't Dookie at all. The the way how abrasive it starts out, and um, uh, you know, but then Walking Contradiction is a good way to end the album. You know, it's it's a it's literally the whole song is written as a contradiction of one thing after another. It's like, you know, <laughs> pretty cool. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, to the to this day, that album um, gets played on a regular basis. <laughs> um, I'd say probably maybe I listen to that album at least probably once every three weeks. I would say once every four weeks. It, it's it's very rare where I don't listen to that that album at least once every yeah once every three weeks I, I don't go six months without listening to that album because just the impact it had on my life and just what it had to offer and uh yeah so yeah um you know that's what it is so with that being said you know um <laughs> that's it my mouth is dry this is numb Locked up and spun out in my rain 